auscultatory measurement of blood pressure in a toddler combines use of stethoscope to hear carotid cough sounds and aneroid sphygmomanometer to quantify blood pressure values. There are three key elements to successful blood pressure readings in a toddler, the patient, the equipment, and the technique. The patient should be resting approximately five minutes in a seated, comfortable position prior to the blood pressure reading. Legs should be uncrossed, and ideally there should be no talking. Allow parents to hold or comfort the child as needed to achieve a seated resting position. The equipment. The equipment should be in good working order with parts intact. It should be calibrated by manufacturer recommendation. Choosing the correct style and size of cuff is very important to an accurate reading. Too small a cuff will result in a falsely elevated reading. Too large a cuff will result in a falsely low reading. The length of the bladder should be approximately 80% of the arm circumference, while the width of the bladder should be approximately 40% of the arm circumference. Once applied, the cuff should cover approximately two-thirds of the area between the elbow and the shoulder. Consider the length of the bladder first in patients who are very thin or very obese. The technique. Use the stethoscope bell rather than the diaphragm if it's available. Check measurement on the right arm if only one limb is evaluated. Place the cuff about one inch or two and a half centimeters above the antecubital fossa, paying attention to the artery indicator line on the cuff. Line up the indicator line with the brachial artery. The cuff should be placed next to skin and not over clothing. Support the patient's arm at the level of their heart. Next, obtain the obliterative pulse pressure value. Inflate the cuff slowly while palpating the radial artery. When the radial artery is no longer palpated, this is the estimated systolic blood pressure. When proceeding with the blood pressure measurement, inflate the cuff 20 to 30 millimeters of mercury above the observed obliterative pressure. Slowly deflate the cuff 2 to 3 millimeters of mercury per second while listening for the carotid cough sounds. Appearance of phase 1 or tapping is the systolic blood pressure. Appearance of phase 5 or silence is the diastolic blood pressure. If sounds are heard through zero on the manometer, then the diastolic value should be established using phase 4 or muffling of the carotid cough sound.